I'm now on Battlefield 5. I've got the game running at 240 frames a second solidly at the moment. And this is a 240Hz monitor, so I'm making the most out of the monitor in terms of its responsiveness. This really does give exceptional visual fluidity. When it comes to responsiveness on a monitor, one of the aspects to be aware of with this high frame rate, high refresh rate combination is that it increases the connected feel. So that's how things feel when you interact with the game world, the precision, the fluidity felt. Low input lag helps in that respect. And this monitor does really well because it's got 240Hz refresh rate where it's pumping out up to four times as much visual information every second as a 60 hertz monitor. Plus, it has very low input lag. I measured under one and a half milliseconds, so it has a really nice low signal delay, which is the main element of input lag you feel. Really impressive in that respect. And the visual fluidity is exceptional, because not only have you got the advantages of the refresh rate, but it's put to full use because the monitor has exceptionally fast pixel responses and it achieves that without any drawbacks such as perceivable overshoot or anything like that. So this is far beyond what you'd get on an LCD. So I'm just gonna show you some pursuit photographs to reinforce this idea. It's compared here to the Gigabyte Aorus FI27QX, which is a moderately fast 240 Hertz IPS model. And you can see that there's some powdery trailing with the Gigabyte. I often talk about this in my videos. And if you look at the detail on the UFO itself, it is much better on the ASUS as well. It maintains subtle details better. And actually the detail levels are even better than they're shown here, as you can actually count those white notches really clearly. They're very well defined. You can clearly count them. I know you can see them in the photo, but they're even clearer to the eye. What this means in practice, and even if you consider faster models than the Gigabyte Aorus LCDs, so if you were to consider the BenQ Zowie XL2566K, which is a very fast TN model, that has some isolated weaknesses as well. Not only do you get overshoot, which you don't get any of, and no perceivable overshoot whatsoever on this ASUS, you also get some isolated weaknesses in terms of slower than optimal pixel responses, particularly for bright shades. So if you think about those little notches on the UFO, they would actually be blended even on the BenQ model, even at a high refresh rate, in fact, because the really weaknesses related to the pixel responses. So it's really difficult to convey this. It's really something you'd have to see in person, and it's something which some users are more sensitive to than others. It's certainly something I'm sensitive to, and I just really like the 240 hertz experience that this provides, really the visually perfect sample and hold 240 hertz experience with no artifacts, no weaknesses whatsoever in terms of its pixel responses. So even the smallest little details, they're really as sharp as you can expect from a sample and hold 240 hertz experience. I'm on a different scene now, and this scene is really good at highlighting those weaknesses I talked about, even if they're slight weaknesses with the LCD models, because there are a lot of high contrast transitions, a lot of very dark shades combined with much brighter shades and various medium shades. Really nice variety of transitions, but it's really those dark shades that are introduced more here. And in this case, there are just no weaknesses whatsoever. Just really visually perfect experience in terms of the pixel responses. So that's the end of the section now. Uh, not quite, I've got to talk about VRR, variable refresh rate, as well. This monitor does offer VRR. Interestingly enough, it has adaptive sync. That's not particularly interesting, but it does allow you to use NVIDIA's G-Sync compatible mode, as well as AMD FreeSync, or FreeSync Premium, more specifically. But interestingly, although the monitor doesn't have HDMI 2.1 ports, it certainly doesn't have the bandwidth of HDMI 2.1, it does actually support HDMI 2.1 VRR. That means you can use NVIDIA's G-Sync compatible mode via HDMI 2.1. It also means that if you're using a PS5, you should be able to use the VRR support on that. I mean, I don't own a PS5 and I can't confirm this for sure, but the features definitely line up. So I think that's really the main reason they've done this. As a PC user, you're not really gonna to want to use HDMI because you can't get 240 Hertz at the native resolution. But as a console user, you're gonna be using HDMI and it's nice to have the full capabilities in terms of uh, the variable refresh rate support as well. It is nice to be able to use that VRR support. I've increased the graphics settings significantly. It's now dropped down to around 120 frames a second. It sometimes shoots up a little bit beyond that. I now notice an increase in perceived blur because the frame rate is lower, not anything to do with the monitor itself. And 
I also notice a decrease in connected feel. Again, that's just related to the lower frame rate. But there are, there are no issues in terms of the pixel responsiveness. There's no overshoot or anything. It suddenly pops in just because I'm at a lower refresh rate. So it's really nice to see. And also at this point, I would mention that comparing the 240 hertz on this to the 175 hertz on the Alienware AW3423DW, I do notice a difference. I do appreciate the additional refresh rate on the ASUS. I mean, they both offer a really nice experience in their own ways, but having the 240Hz OLED experience really is quite something, I have to say. But things aren't perfect when it comes to VRR. The monitor does suffer from VRR flickering. All OLEDs do, to some degree. And VA LCDs are particularly bad in this respect. So what happens is when there are changes in the refresh rate, there are also some slight gamma changes that occur at the low end, so that's for darker shades, or dark to medium dark shades really. So I can see flickering, or you can see flickering on the video I'm sure as well, for these darker shades here. The brighter shades aren't affected by this, you might be able to see a little bit of what looks like flickering higher up the gradient on the video, but that's actually just from the camera or something that's picking up there, it's not something that uh, I can see by eye. So what this test is doing is it's causing significant fluctuations in refresh rate. You can certainly see this in game as well, from time to time, where there are significant fluctuations in refresh rate. But unlike VA models, you don't get it throughout the screen. In addition to these gamma changes, which are visible on the OLED because the contrast is so strong, you get some of that on VA models as well, but you also get VRR flickering related to weaknesses in voltage regulation, which means the whole screen can flicker. And that's more noticeable, and actually it can happen even when the frame rate's quite stable in that case. But in this case, it's with the fluctuations in frame rate. Not everyone's going to notice this or find it bothersome, but I know some people will. And it could be tempting if, if you do find it bothersome. Really, well, you could disable VRR entirely, but if that's really not an option or not something you want to do, you could consider lowering the refresh rate, perhaps to 120 hertz, Depending on what your game is running at, that might mean you can have a stable 120 frames a second rather than having sort of dips from, say, 200 to 140 frames a second, which may mean this flickering is visible. But on the flip side, you're not going to be taking advantage of those frame rates above 120 if you do that. And the VR flickering on this, I did find it a bit more noticeable than on the AW3423DW. I think that the G-Sync module actually has something to do with that. I think it retunes the gamma a little bit. It doesn't eliminate the VRR flickering, but it does seem to improve it a bit. And the reason I say that is not just because of the comparison with these two models. I did do a side-by-side -side comparison with both models set to 120 hertz just to even things out, and I still noticed this difference. But actually, I've had users come up to me and say they've tried the AW3423DW as well as some of the other QD OLED ultrawides, and they find them more flickering on the models which don't have the G-Sync module, the Adaptive Sync monitors. So it does seem that the G-Sync module is actually helping a bit here, but either way I would say that it's not something that's going to bother everyone, it will bother some people, it's just how it is, and it's not specific to this monitor. I'm now at the game running at 60 frames a second, the monitor is running at 60 hertz with VRR, and I'm using NVIDIA's G-Sync compatible mode, by the way, just in case you're wondering, with my RTX 3090. And there are no issues with overshoot, even here, where you'd expect to see them. Or you might expect to see them. And that's because OLEDs don't need aggressive pixel overdrive, which can lead to overshoot. They're just natively extremely fast. They don't have to use the same kind of overdrive that LCDs would use. Of course, the connected feel, the perceived blur levels, <laughs> not great because of the low frame rate, but that's not the monitor's fault, that's just how it is. The VRR range of this monitor is claimed to be 40 to 240 hertz. In my testing, it was more like 50 to 240 hertz. Doesn't really make a big difference either way, just something to note. Below the floor operation, it will use LFC, low frame rate compensation, or in NVIDIA's case, an LFC-like feature. This will mean that the refresh rate of the monitor will stick to a multiple of the frame rates to keep tearing and stuttering at bay, much like you get when you're in the main window of operation. Issue to be aware of, though, is that when you pass that boundary, so let's say you go from 51 frames a second to 50 frames a second, the monitor will go from 51 hertz to 100 hertz. That's a significant change in refresh rate, and yes, you do get VRR flickering when that occurs. There's also stuttering, momentary stuttering when this occurs, because there's really no perceived blur from the monitor's pixel responses to mask this. 
stuttering in general is more noticeable. And with that in mind, actually, you can notice stuttering, which VRR will not get rid of. I like to call this micro stuttering. Some people will refer to it as micro stuttering. Not everyone's as sensitive to this as other people. I'm particularly sensitive to it, and I do notice it from time to time. But it, it's, you know, it can be caused by issues with the game engine or elsewhere on the system and not necessarily something which VRR technologies can help with. I also noticed a bit more of this on models which don't have a G-Sync module, so I noticed less of this with my AW3423DW, but again, I'm not trying to scare Mungi here, not everyone's going to be sensitive enough to really notice this, it is something I'm sensitive to, and it is something sensitive users can notice, and that is a point in favour of models which have a G-Sync module if you are sensitive to this kind of thing. But overall, definitely a lot to like about the response performance of this monitor, really fluid 240Hz experience in particular, good support for refresh rates below that as well. The monitor doesn't have BFI, black frame insertion, or a pixel strobing feature, whatever you want to call it. So you are bound by the sample and hold limitations. So you are gonna get a certain level of perceived blur due to that, linked to the eye movement. And again, this is explored more in the written review and in the article all about responsiveness on the website if you're interested in the technical side of things. But I would say that the 240 hertz sample and hold experience with the perfect pixel responses that this offers really is quite something in itself.